You are listening to the Choose Your Struggle Podcast, a member of the Shameless Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Choose Your Struggle Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Schiffman. On this show, I interview people with lived and learned experiences on the subjects of mental health, substance misuse and recovery, and drug use and policy, but occasionally we talk about other topics as well. This week's guest is author and licensed marriage and family therapist, Laurie Singer. But first, Kid Mental, let's go. Things ain't always gonna go our way, but you can always win when you choose your struggle. And some battles will be yesterday, but today is for a new beginning. Choose your struggle, and don't worry about what they say. But you can always win when you choose your struggle, and you can bounce back. Yes, that's true. Come on in, listen in to choose your struggle. Hello and welcome to the Choose Your Struggle podcast. So great to be back with you all. We are coming quickly to the end of this season. Counting today, there are only five total episodes left, and that counts the two Monday Motivation ones coming up. Five more. And it's been a great season. Uh, as As I mentioned before, The Monday motivations remaining are going to be a look back at this season and a little bit about how far I and Choose Your Struggle have come over the last couple of years as well. And the the other one is going to be a look forward, what's coming up, all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's it's, it's a great time for for reflection. It's a great time to be excited about what's coming up. Uh, Tune in starting Monday for for those this coming Monday and then the following Monday are going to be those episodes. Counting today, as I said, we have three more of the Friday episodes left. Uh, I'm, I'm done recording. I am done uh, just editing and putting them out at this point. So uh, really excited to, to have you all hear them. Starting with today, they were all interesting in, in different ways. And in the season finale, man, I, I'm excited for you all to hear it. We had a wonderful chat. Before we get into today's episode, though, I do have a, a special announcement. So I am doing a thank you uh, giveaway to end the season. Uh, there's three incredible prizes. Uh, th- here is how this is going to work before I talk about the prizes. Anyone who leaves a review by, let's say, oh, I don't know, how about Thanksgiving, or right around that time? Anyone who leaves a review by Thanksgiving will be entered to win. Now, I know your first thought is, oh my God, Jay, I already left a review. Do I get, yes, you're fine. Anyone who has left a review for this show will be entered to win one of these three prizes right around Thanksgiving. So if you've not done so yet, go do so. (laughs) It's, It's very easy. It's in the show notes. Uh, there are multiple places to leave a review in the show notes. If you listen on uh, iTunes, you can leave a review right there. The way this will work is every review is going to be an entry. Now, if you are amazing and decide to leave multiple reviews, you'll get multiple entries. That's how that's that's how that's going to be. So every review is going to get an entry. I will then enter those names into sort of a, a random name generator. Uh, and, and the winners will be selected at random. So uh, there's no there's no bias here. Uh, you just have to leave a review. That's all you got to do. It can even, it doesn't have to be a good review. I mean, I'll, I'll be less excited if, if somebody leaves a two-star, this, I, this podcast sucks, I don't even know why I listen, and they win. Yeah, that will suck for me. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, fair and square. So uh, leave a review. Look in the show notes wherever you're listening to this. If you're on iTunes, just leave it right there. Um, other sites include Listen Notes. Uh, there's an incredible website. Uh, that you all should check out called Great Pods because the founder, uh, the captain, Imran, is a good friend, has been on this show. Uh, leave a review there. Leave it anywhere. Leave a review anywhere. Uh, if it's not one of the verified places, I won't see it. But that, you know, uh, if you if if you don't think I'm going to see it, feel free to send it to me. Also, to make sure I can find you, because a lot of those reviews don't have your name, uh, you know, if you want to reach out to me on social media or through the website and say, hey, just a heads up, you know, this 
uh, I don't know, uh, star fan 63 or whatever is me. <laughs> yes, please do that. Because um, as you heard me just say, this is going to be through the end of November. So uh, the the names will not be announced on this show. They'll be they'll be uh, on on social media. So uh, definitely follow me there. If you if it's someone I know, I don't know. Uh, shout out to let's say oh who's amazing and always listens to this show. Um, shout out to my my dear friend Paris Prinkevich. Uh, if she leaves a review, I'm gonna be like, hey Paris, you won. You know, like like if she gets pulled. If I don't know you personally and your name does not resemble who you are, uh, please say you know send me something. So the three prizes number one. That is going to be a Choose Your Struggle prize pack. It's going to include some stickers, wristbands, um, magnets, and tank tops. Uh, you're going to get the whole works. That's number one. Number two is uh, going to be a, a, a Choose Your Struggle partner prize pack. It'll be a uh, roll-on muscle gel from the incredible people over at Roadrunner and a gift card from my friends at Bookshop. So uh, that's amazing. Thank you to my partners for that. And number three, because you know... That feeling good and being uh, comfortable, not in pain. These are things that are very important to me here at Choose Your Struggle. So a, I don't even know how to pronounce this. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a muscle massager made by Yuji. You, Yuji. Uh, if you work for y Yaji, and I'm saying this wrong, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> let me know. Uh, but you're going to get a muscle muscle massager from your friends here at Choose Your Struggle. So, uh, so many reasons to enter, so many reasons to uh, leave a review. I'm going to talk about this on every episode for the last five. So, you know, get used to this. Uh, and uh, please do it. It means a lot to me to hear your thoughts. It means a lot to the show. It bumps up. You know, it, it's very helpful to have more reviews. And um, it, it can help you out. You'll be entered to win a prize. So, uh, please, please do so. Now, without further ado, today's episode is with, uh, as you heard on theme on the way in, Laurie Singer. She is a therapist. She's an author of a really fantastic book. I found her uh, online um, and, and just loved her story. And you're going to hear why. I, I mean, uh, it's not often. I, I say this. From, <laughs> I say this from the heart. It's not often that I'm speechless and I you hear it early on this or I'm just like, Bleh. I don't know how to respond to that. Um, and, and, and I would say in a good way, it is a good way. I mean, it's 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 the vulnerability of her story, uh, and, and that's incredible. So um, huge shout out to Lori for being incredible, doing really amazing work. Uh, what's so great? What's so great about Lori is that she has this vulnerable, moving story at the beginning, and then. By the end, we're talking about fetishes. It, it's just a, a full spectrum. So I really, really am appreciative to Lori. Uh, one note, for the second time in two weeks, we had an issue with the other person's uh, technology. Uh, you heard that last week for um, Ayana Davis. Lori was having some issues on her end. Um, and by the time we finally got it working, we our... our, our, our um, our allotted time was a little bit less than normal. So it is a shorter episode, uh, which is one of the reasons why I don't mind <laughs> uh, just yakking on here on the intro. So, uh, but but she, it's a shorter one, but she knocks it out of the park the entire way. So uh, thank you to Lori and her team who were very helpful in, in making this conversation happen. And, and I really, really hope you enjoyed this, uh, this conversation because uh, I, I enjoy getting to know Lori. So without further ado, enjoy my conversation with Lori Singer. A quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. I am so grateful for your support and your love. Y'all have been with me since almost the beginning, and so much of this podcast could not be done without you. Almost to a person, they've all told me that they didn't join for the perks, although there are some pretty fantastic perks, but they've all joined just to support the show, and it really means so much to me. Now, if you join, you are going to get some stuff in return. You'll get sneak peeks, extra content, and the chance to interact with me on a second level. It's really a great way to show support if you love this show. So go ahead and check it out today. Go to patreon.com slash choose your struggle. The lowest tier is only $3.40 a month. 
and there's multiple tiers after that there's something for everybody so truly i truly mean this thank you to all of my patreon supporters and if you've been waiting to sign up well now's a great time so head on over to patreon and show a little bit of love choose your struggle find me on social media check the link in the show notes or search for me jay schiffman on youtube and linkedin and choose your struggle on facebook instagram and twitter Hi, everybody. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Lori Singer. I'm a licensed marriage family therapist and board certified in applied behavioral analysis. Uh, I'm in my 60s, and I'm very active in my community. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself and how I got into my career. Uh, it was very, it was later in life. I was not good in high school at all. So I don't want you to think that I've accomplished all this at a very young age. I started everything later in life. Um, well, my relationship with my husband, I moved in when I was 19. So I guess that started early and wow, we're still that's, to... <laughs> that's early. Like, that congratulations early. on the, on the, on, on a very long and uh, I would assume happy marriage. Yes, yes, we're very happy, and um, we still support each other along the way emotionally, which is great. Uh, I think that's key. But he, my husband and I did uh, experience a tragedy early in our marriage, um, and actually before that, I had a not-so-normal childhood growing up in the home of an alcoholic parent, a mother, and she left our family when I was 10 years old. And so my father raised us, and uh, that was difficult for him, especially coming from a background of uh, just a middle-class family, uh, growing up Jewish, and um, not having a mother in the house was it was difficult for my dad. We pretty much raised ourselves, and um, that impacted us throughout our lives. I didn't realize it at the time, how much it was going to impact me as an adult and as an adolescent. So it was fortunate that I did meet my husband at 19 because I think I could have definitely headed down the wrong path if I hadn't. Um, so when I was 19, I moved in with my husband. We had our first child when I was 22. Um, and then we had our second child when I was, um, 23 and then he developed cancer and died when he was 26 i mean when i was 26 i apologize and he had just turned two and that was very traumatic for our entire family having to watch your child suffer and then you know just being away from our other daughter who was three and we lived at children's hospital at the time and it was very very difficult what i walked away with from that was that i wanted to do something for the other families that were there and the other siblings because when my son was in the hospital he was in the hospital for two and a half months until he passed away and my daughter would come to visit and there wouldn't be anything for her to do there she would just like wander up and down the halls or hang out with us and there really wasn't anything for my son to do either so we decided that two months after my son passed away we would have uh um, we wanted to have an event in his name and donate the money to Children's Hospital. And we've continued to do that. This will be our 35th annual event in our son's name, Jacob Singer. All the money is donated to the Child Life Program, which actually my husband and I were founders of. Because we kept donating money every year to the playroom, they were thinking, well, we can't just keep buying the kids toys we'd like to help fund for therapists for the other kids that are staying there and for the families because a lot of the times the kids don't make it out of there and they want to they need to work with somebody the siblings need to talk to somebody it's a doctor free zone and so we help fund the child life program at children's hospital which i'm very proud of and um i also because of his death i ended up going back to school and running cross country for the local college, a community college. And having barely graduated high school myself because my grades were so poor, at the time I, I didn't know that I had ADHD and I probably have another learning disability, but I was able to use my skills in running to um, study. And I ended up being the cross country captain for our team 
and I graduated valedictorian and headed over to UCLA. And from there, I was fortunate enough to get pregnant again with my, uh, with my daughter, Jessica. And um, I just, I just keep going. I just don't stop. I, I don't, because, you know, it's funny. I tell people, if you have a diagnosis like ADD, ADHD, OCD, whatever it is, you can use it to your advantage. You just have to learn how to balance it. I think that's the key because I've been able to channel my energy into helping other people, continuing my education. I think if I didn't have it, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I think that's true for a lot of professionals. Um, it did work out though, that when I ended up going back to school, um, I had to, I decided to go to therapy because in my school, I would, I could count that as my hours towards my license. And I had never gone to therapy before. And while I was in therapy, the therapist had me talk about my past, which I never did in my life. And I talked about my mom leaving and this brought up a lot of emotions for me that I stuffed way down inside and never dealt with. And so when all that started resurfacing and then the death of my son, I started to experience anxiety and panic for the first time. And it became very debilitating but I was able to work through it with my therapist, along with using some of my strategies that I was using with my clients at the time. And that's how this whole thing kind of took on a life of its own. Well, thank you so much, Lori, for, for telling your, your story. And, and I cannot, obviously, and, I, and maybe this is something you and I can talk about, but what, like, I don't even know what to say to someone at the loss of a child. I'm so sorry for your loss. I can't imagine how hard that was. And, and and how incredible that you turned such a heartbreaking tragedy into something as beautiful as you have. Yeah, it's, you know, Jay, it's, um, it's so strange because in that moment, and probably, you know, I felt, I felt, you know, trying to work through that and having... Uh, a five-year-old daughter who still needs you. That was, for me, I just felt that was the part that I felt worse more than anything. You know, how do we, how do I give to my daughter what she needs at the same time? I need to grieve myself. So I felt like I almost had to hide my grieving from her to, to help her through her developmental stages at the time. So that's such, that's such a, a, an important point and something that we don't, you know, I don't think we hear about as much is is the, of course, the, the family loses somebody and everybody has their own uh, relationship with that loss. H has this something, is this something that you and your daughter have talked about, about what that was like for her as a five-year-old? I did. And um, she remembers some things but I think she's probably blocked some of it out of her mind too you know we can I only remember bits and pieces of when I was three like I remember the first time I went to Disneyland <laughs> I was three and I remember just certain things um and it's I don't know if it's better that she doesn't remember uh but I mean it's not it the last few months of his life just weren't quality. And so I, I wouldn't want her to have to relive that anyway. Um, my, now, my youngest daughter, who was born, I guess they're 11 years apart. So they were, she was born much later. She seems almost as if she was more affected by it because what she had said to me, I remember at a young age, she was crying. And I said, what's wrong, Jessica? And she said, I had a brother that I never got to meet. And so for her, I think it was, uh, it was very emotional. In fact, she ended up when she was in college, she studied film and she did a video, an audio with different pictures of us growing up about and interviewed each family member about Jacob and his passing. And it's on my, it's on my website. I haven't watched it for a long time. Some of these things are too hard for me to even watch now, uh, but um, it turned out really well. And it was interesting to see everybody's perspective on it and listen to it. Well, it, again, you know, something so awful, it seems, has has given birth to multiple, you know, beautiful things from, from that loss. 
uh, it, you must have a very tight knit family. Is that is that accurate? We do. And I, my in-laws and my father were very, very close to Bob and I and Jackie. And that's actually, we were so fortunate at the time when Jacob was in the hospital, because what kind of prompted me to go back to school was I could see other families who were suffering and they would blame each other when the child was in the hospital and or different cultures that would, you know, just put the blame on somebody else, the other parent or whatever it is. And I and I thought, gosh, you know, if I can help any of these families when I get out of this situation, that's what I would want to do, because I felt bad that they didn't have the kind of support that Bob and I had. So let's talk about that for a second, because, you know, as you said in, in your story so beautifully, was that you went to therapy almost because it was a, a, a gimme for, for something you were doing, not because you were like, this is a thing I need to do. Why was that? And, and I guess, by the way, my listeners know this, but you may not is that I'm Jewish as well. And we do have that <laughs> stereotype of keeping things in the household, right? Yes. Um, was that a big part of why you hadn't gone to therapy or, or talk, talk us through that a little bit? Okay, I will. And I, I find that interesting, too, because not only in the hospital did they not have any games for the kids to play with, like when Jackie would come, there would be a Mr. Potato Head with maybe one eye. Um, <laughs> but they didn't have therapists. Even when I was younger, like my mom left our family. And what was my, my I think my dad took me to therapy one time and I was such a brat. I thought, I'm not going to talk to her. I'm not going to say anything. And then when my husband and I lost Jacob, they had, there was no support for Bob and I, you know, there was no, nobody said here, go to this therapist. You probably should talk about grieving. All we got was like, what was it? I don't know, the seven stages of grieving. And right. I had it. Yeah. I had it on my refrigerator. And then I remember one of my relatives saying, well, when is she going to get out of it? I mean, when is she going to move on to number eight and be done with this? <laughs> um, so I, I, I don't, you know, now it's, there's no stigma behind therapy now. I think back then there was a stigma and there really wasn't the help out there that there is today. The grieving groups that you can have, uh, it's much, much different today. I, I definitely agree. I don't know if I would say that there's no stigma, but uh, there's a, <laughs> there is a lot less that is for sure. Um, it, I guess it, this is this is a question, a, sort of a backhanded question, but would it be fair to say that some of the work you're doing is almost as a a, a result of of being like, well, why didn't I get this? Why why didn't I have these resources when I needed it? You know, Jay, uh, I think of that more towards my uh, ADHD and probably learning disability. I, when I was a uh, growing up, not only did I have to pretend like sometimes I would pretend that my mom died because you know she just left and didn't have anything to do with us and to me that was easier than saying oh yeah she's a drug addict and alcoholic uh, people didn't say that in 1960 70 really but um, if I had known I mean who the hell would think that when I go back to a class reunion how can people probably look at me and say she has her own company she wrote a book she has, you know, three degrees. How is that possible? She never went to school. She would ditch all the time. I, I had horrible grades, horrible grades. So more importantly than, than I think um, the therapy, which, you know, I had to go through, but I, if I had known I had a disability at the time, how different would my schooling be as younger? You know, I mean, it would be completely different. So this is, you just brought up a good point and a question I love to ask people who, like you, have lived and learned experience. And I think that's such an important mix because, uh, of course, um, you know, somebody with the, all the incredible education that you've had is going to have all this knowledge that someone like me who is much less education but with lived experience uh, but do you think that you could be doing the work you're doing right now with the passion that you have if you didn't have that lived experience as well no certainly not i don't i don't think so because i can empathize with people plus people can't bullshit me 
because I, <laughs> that's, that's important. That's very important. Oh, it's very important. I'll have a, you know, somebody come into my office, uh, let's say a parent and a, a child, and they'll say, well, you know, my child's really special. They can do this, they can do that. And we have to make allowances. We can't, we can't put a reward system in place because I just give them money or I do this or I do that for them. And I tell them, I say, you know, your, your child is unique, but your child isn't that special. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're all the same, you know, we're not that special. We just have our own differences. So I think that's, um, I, I don't think I could be doing this. I really don't. And it's another interesting thing is at the time my son passed away and probably for the next 10 years after that, People would come up to me and say, probably elderly people will say, you know, this happened for a reason. And I thought, what do you mean this happened for a reason? How can you say, I watched my son being tortured and you're telling me that this happened for a reason. But now, 35 years later, looking back at how much I've helped other people, maybe it did happen for a reason. You know, maybe there was a bigger plan. I don't know. I, you know, I, uh, who's to say? All I do know is, to your question, no, I wouldn't be able to help people in the extent that I am now. It wouldn't have happened. That's a great transition into talking about your work. But before we do, uh, let's let's if you wouldn't mind shouting out where people can find you online, uh, buy the book, all that kind of stuff. Sure, um, you can find me online. My book is "You're Not Crazy." book.com and then my website to my my practice is lori singer behavioral.com or you can just google my name l-a-u-r-i-e singer uh behavioral health and it should pop up and um, you can buy my book on amazon or you can buy my book at barnes and noble.com it's at a few of the barnes and noble in in the area in the ventura county area and some libraries um and that's where you can, or, and one, I, I think both of the uh, websites will connect with each other. So if you look up one set website, the other one should be available to you. Hey y'all, it's me, your host. I'm sorry to interrupt what I'm sure is a fantastic episode of the podcast, but I have to give a quick shout out to my partner, Roadrunner CBD. They have been working with me for a while now, and I just love their products. They have everything from tinctures to muscle gels, and all of them are fantastic. You know, I rub the muscle gel on my legs before I run, and they keep me feeling pretty good, which is saying something. So check out Roadrunner today at their website, www.roadrunnercbd.com slash ref, R-E-F slash C-Y-S. Again, that's roadrunnercbd.com slash ref slash C-Y-S, and use the code C-Y-S at checkout to let them know that I sent you and get 10% off. Trust me, you're gonna love this. I've sent some of their products to a couple different people and they've all become repeat customers. So check it out today and don't forget to let them know that Choose Your Struggle sent you. Thanks for sharing the podcast with your friends. If you're listening on Apple, please rate and review or check out the review link in the show notes. And don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. So we've now heard sort of what uh, brought you to, to this point and why you care so deeply about it. What I think is so interesting is sort of the, the diverse um, topics that you cover in your work. <laughs> yeah. can, can you talk a little bit about why uh, all those are incredibly important? And I have to point out one of them in particular, because all my listeners are going to love this. Um, your book, it says you're not crazy living with anxiety, obsession, and fetishes. So, so let's talk a little bit about that diversity for a moment of all those topics. Okay. Um, I, you know, my, in my work is never a dull moment and nothing really surprises me anymore. I think a lot of the clients that come to see me, uh, I try to make them feel very comfortable and, and some of them will say, gosh, I've never really shared that with anybody before. But I figured they're coming in to see me. They need a solution. We need to figure out a solution to their problem. Uh, and how is that going to happen? And uh, some of them will say, am I, the, am I the, the craziest person that you've ever met? And my answer is always no. 
um, because <laughs> they don't, I guess maybe they don't realize I've been doing this for over 20 years. So I've heard, I think I've heard just about everything. And, and by looking, by reading my book, you'll see what I mean, especially in the fetish department. And I think really that people are relieved once they tell me they get, it's like a, a weight that's taken off of them, um, a backpack full of rocks. One person had told me, I feels like I had a backpack full of rocks and now I took off the backpack. So I thought that was a good analogy. And, um, and that I'm not shocked at what I hear anymore. Nothing really surprises me. And um, I felt it was important to put that part in there with the fetishes because I, to me, I think it's, there's a lot more people that have fetishes than we think that the, there are. And there are people that we wouldn't expect to have them. And it's okay to have them. The problem is, is when it becomes where you can be in trouble, but you know, with the police, or you can get in trouble legally is is the main thing. You know, you can have a fetish as long as it's healthy, but just don't get. Make sure you don't cross that line of where you're going to be arrested. Well, I think that's such an important point, and, and that sort of makes me think about. And you're not of of my generation, but I'm sure you'll appreciate this. That um, you know, I, I call my generation, the millennials, the Y generation, not as in generation Y, but as in asking why. And, and in this sense, it's, well, you know, to your point, if I'm not doing anyone, anything that's hurting anyone, why aren't I allowed to have these fetishes? Why aren't I allowed to do these things that, that bring me joy? And it sounds like that's kind of what you're getting at. Yes, exactly. It's not, um, you know, it's the idea is how do you live with a fetish? in a healthy way. Is it healthy? Is it is it hurting you? Or is it hurting anybody else? Um, and in the book, it talks about the fetish. Well, I, I don't know if you read that one. But um, it it's a fetish with dirty, you know, uh, I don't know how to say well, just Kotex or tampons, things like that. Uh, and I've had other ones that have, you know, uh, reached orgasm with uh, dirty diapers, things like that. But the problem, so when they come to see me, it's it's already created problems in their relationships, either at home or with the law. That's when they come to see me. So it's 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 comes to a point in their life where they have to figure out: can they keep this fetish, or can it kind of be changed or redirected towards something else where they're still getting the same satisfaction, but isn't hurting them or anybody else? I, I got to say, as a guy with OCD, those do not sound like my fetishes, but thank you for sharing. <laughs> um, I think it's so interesting. So this is what I, uh, the question I have, you know, the anxiety piece, obviously, are, are, are everyday, you know, issues, day to day mental health struggles, um, the obsessions that all, of course, they, that's what therapists deal with. What made you interested in, in also talking to clients about fetishes? Why was that important to you? Well, because I figured it out. The first time that happened was I got, and so I guess I'm really, it, I almost feel like a detective in a way. When a client comes to see me, they come in for a certain problem, but either they don't know or they're not revealing what the, what the problem is or the crux of the problem. So I have to kind of chip away as, and ask questions to find out. And I guess I can use an example of one individual who I got called in for aggression with his staff. He was becoming aggressive with his staff. What this actually came down to was that this individual was had a fetish he was engaging in in his bedroom and the staff would interrupt him or come in. And so, and he had gotten in trouble for for going in the laundry room of his apartment and stealing women's, uh, you know, clothing, whether it was uh, bathing suits or nightgowns, things like that. So he was starting to get in trouble in the apartment. He was getting in trouble with his staff. He was, um, I think he even stole something from a store. So once we identified it's okay if you purchase these items on your own with your own money and keep them in your room, but you can't steal them. You can't take them from a laundry room and you have to put something on the outside of your door, like do not disturb. It's okay to do that. And what a relief for him. I mean, what a relief. He was so happy and, and things got worked out, but it wasn't 
that wasn't the main reason why I had, you know, had initially began to work with him. So I thought, you know, he was so happy. In fact, I, I even pointed out to him, I would bring my articles, look, there's other people like yourself that are experiencing pleasure from the same things that you do. And how, can you imagine what a relief that was for him? So, so it almost sounds like that uh, you didn't, well, you didn't, you didn't set out to deal with that specifically. You just found that it, it was actually helping your clients to do so. Exactly. And in a more recent case that I have, this gentleman is 76 years old uh, and 76 years old. He lives in a different state actually, but he got my book and he, he reached out to me and he had had um, intrusive thoughts about possibly being gay. And at the time when he was growing up, it was, it was really frowned upon, you know, it wasn't accepted at all. And actually he's, he, he really isn't gay, but he had these intrusive thoughts. And then that led to other intrusive thoughts. And he just was so unhappy for so many years. And it started at 25 years old and we started working together and he does great. He, he implements out all the suggestions. He's still journaling. And he said, this is the best he's felt in his life. And now he keeps asking, why didn't I find your work sooner? But I said, you can't go back. <laughs> I said, you can't go back and, and look at it that way. Maybe you weren't ready at that time to work on yourself. Who knows? So let's talk first about the book. And then I do want to, of course, at the end, talk about how people can work with you. But uh, so what was your motivation to write it? I mean, you know, there are a lot of therapists in, in, who do incredible work, but but never have that drive. What to you was like, all right, I have to do this? Well, many years ago, I get a lot of referrals from dermatologists because I have a lot of skin pickers, the excoriation and obsessive compulsive disorders. And um the, the physicians in the area would say, you know, Lori, you should really write a book. Your stuff really works. I, we, could, we could tell, we can give a patient medication, but if they don't have the right type of, of therapy, it's not going to work. And I, I thought about that for a while. And then I was just getting started on writing the book and my mom developed cancer and I actually reconnected with my mom. Um, mm. And uh, that's in the book as well, which I never thought I would do. I, if anybody would have asked me growing up, would you help your mom? Would you do this? I would say, no, there's no way I am. But when, when she did develop cancer and she was all alone, I thought to myself, okay, what good is this going to do? I can either, I have a choice. There's a choice I can make in life. I can, I can choose to have a relationship with her. It's not going to be the relationship one ideally of mother and daughter, but it's the best that we're going to have. And I can introduce her to her grandkids. How great would that be? And um, so I put the book on hold and then she passed away. And then my dad passed away. And finally on my 60th birthday, um, just almost two years ago, I thought, okay, now it's time. I have to write the book. I, I needed a new goal. Well, that's that's awesome, and I can assume it already. You've already told a couple of stories, but I, I'd assume that something like that, uh, the the feedback, the positive re responses you've gotten are are what you know. As someone, that's why I do this show is the positive feedback. And I'm sure that in in many ways is the case for you as well. Yes, and and the the one case in the book, the OCD case in the book um, was based, you know, the clients are changed, male could be female, you know, whatever it is, and uh, the family dynamics have changed. But that one OCD case, when that individual came to see me, it was the first time I thought, I don't know if I can help. This girl was a mess. And I felt horrible. I mean, they had quit school. Um, they had, their whole life was just stopped. And the, and the partner at the time was enabling the individual for years because he didn't know what to do. He didn't know what was best. And, and, and so it, it was a, the dynamics was just amazing. And, and then when I started to write the book, I called this couple back into my office six years later. I, they responded. I couldn't believe it. They came back in. This was six years later when I went to write the book. And that individual with the OCD, I said, how are things going? And she said, everything's going really well. And I said, oh, that's great. Um, what seems to be working? And she said, well, I, I still have the OCD, but it doesn't dictate my day. I still have the motivational story you wrote me. 
I still have the visuals in my bathroom. I still have the visuals next to my bed. And she just graduated college. She got, they got married to each other. I mean, it's just an amazing story. And she told me, she said, Lori, I didn't, when I first came to see you, I was so bad that I was actually contemplating suicide, which she never told me. So I'm really glad that they're, I can't believe they're still using everything. That, that's what's amazing to me. And you're right. That's what's a motivating factor in all of this, to, to helping people and see that this, this stuff really works. It really is amazing. So that's, a, again, a great transition to if, if someone's listening to this and they're saying, well, you know, she's speaking my language. This sounds right for me. What does working with you look like? And, and well, what it looks like is, and, and in my book, you'll see that I, first I go into my story and kind of what I did at the beginning of this um, interview. And then it goes into each case study and what that looks like from the time they walk into my office until we develop a treatment plan. So I'll get a number of somebody will call my office and my uh, office manager will screen it. And then I'll talk to the person and I'll say, this is what my therapy looks like. So you have to, you have to be willing to work with me and this is what it's going to look like. It's not going to be where you're going to come in every week and tell me what your problems are, and then you're going to leave. It's very solution focused, and you have to work at it. I'm going to give you homework. I'm going to write a treatment plan. I'm going to make you accountable. I'll give you a notebook with all the treatment plan recommendations in it, but you also have to be accountable in, in running that plan. And in my book, I have a section in the back that's actually a workbook. It gives you all the tools. It's, it teaches you how to write your own motivational story, a fill in the blanks, if you will. It has visual aids in there that you can make copies of everything and write your own treatment plan. That's uh, pretty cool. That's uh, <laughs> definitely something that I think everyone can can use, whether you end up, you know, working with a therapist or not. That That is a, a tool to, for, for self-inspection. And that's something we all could use. Yeah, one of my more recent um, clients is a, I think she's 20 year old uh, skin picker. She came in for skin picking. Um, and she was seeing another therapist for about two and a half years. And, and this is typical and it's nothing bad. I mean, everybody has their own modality that they use. Mine is just, mine is very fact oriented. And we, and when I, I gave you the data sheets, when you come into my office, I, I kind of try to get a history of the problem behavior because you may not really know when it started, but you know, what's happening sure. right now. And then we review data sheets together, antecedent behavior and consequence and the antecedent meaning what's happening just prior to the behavior. And um, then what it was a consequence of your behavior, because I want to come up with a plan that's going to take a proactive approach. We'll find out what the triggers are that's happening just prior to your behavior. And how do I come up with a plan to stop you from engaging in the behavior? And if you do engage in the behavior, whatever you're doing now isn't working because you're continuing to do it. So we need to come up with a plan for that as well. Well, I appreciate that you are very much a, uh, a take charge and, and let's make sure we're helping you and not um, you know, just, uh, just talking through things. I like that you are plan oriented. That's pretty, that's pretty great. Yeah. And if you, if you, I give somebody, like, I will tell somebody, um, I just had a mom just text me just now, actually. And she said, you know, do you think it's going to work? Do you think it's going to work? And I'm like, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm ready to write the treatment plan. And so if your daughter's going to run the plan, it will work. If she chooses not to run it, I won't see her anymore because I don't want to take her money. I don't want to waste my time. And I have other people that want to see me that want to do the work. Well, I love to hear that. We need more uh, more treatment professionals like you, and uh, I, I appreciate you you taking the time to chat with all of us. Before we get into the final questions, one more time, if you wouldn't mind shouting out where people can find you online, where they can reach out, all that kind of stuff. Sure. So um, you can find me online at lauriesingerbehavioral.com, L-A-U-R-I-E-S-I-N-G-E-R, behavioral.com. You can also look at you're not crazy book.com or you can just google my name lori l-a-u-r-i-e singer ventura county behavioral health well we always finish with the same two questions the first of which is you you help so many people but what self-care habits work for you well i just got back from backpacking in the appalachian mountains so I did a, it, you know, it was a 115 mile backpacking trip 
through uh, Tennessee and North Carolina. I, um, I'm an endurance athlete um, and I've been exercising or, I don't know, competing, competing, I guess, uh, since 1982. So I, and I was inducted into the Ventura County Hall of Fame for sports uh, a few years ago. But I just, I, I run, I run, I bike, I swim um, when I'm not working. That's what I do. And my grandkids. <laughs> well, congrats on the Hall of Fame. That's awesome. Yeah, that was nice. That was a surprise. <laughs> so the final question we always finish, this, finish with, excuse me, is we've now spent the last 35 minutes hearing why you're amazing. We all need to be <laughs> following you and reading your book. But this is your chance to shout out some people that are influential on you. So what are you reading? What are you listening to? Uh, what are you watching? Anything like that? What am I watching? Oh my gosh. So you mean like on Netflix? <laughs> Literally anything you want to shout out, books we should read, podcasts we should listen to, anything like that. Okay. Um, I read a great book. It was, oh, it's right here. Uh, Manson Exposed, which was a, an amazing book. If you ever want to, I, I like to read true stories most of the time. So it's by Ivor Davis. That was a great book. Manson Exposed. Um, I'm just in, just starting another book um, in my father's court by Isaac, uh, actually his last name has to be Singer, but that looks like it's very interesting. Uh, what do I like to watch on TV? Or I don't watch a bunch of TV, but I do watch, there's a series I'm watching. Um, what the heck is it? Now I can't think of what the name of it is. Oh, Billions. So <laughs> Billings is great. And there happens to be somebody with a fetish on that. So I found that interesting. Um, I thought that was good. And that's about it. I don't have time for much else, it seems like. Well, that all is uh, very interesting. Thank you for those shout out, shout outs. And uh, I just sincerely, thank you so much for taking the time. It's been fantastic chatting with you. Jay, thank you for your patience. I really appreciate it. And for having me on your show, it was very, very nice of you. And uh, I always learn something from every podcast that I do. So I appreciate, I appreciate you having me on your show. The Choose Your Struggle podcast has been so lucky to have numerous truly change-making authors on this show. From Adi Jaffe to Emily Dufton, we have been blessed by hearing them speak, and now it's time to grab their works. Now, you could go to Amazon if you wanted to shop online, but let's be honest, that's not the right choice. So I'm going to invite you to head over to my partner, Bookshop. If you go to bookshop.org slash shop slash CYS, again, that's bookshop.org slash shop slash CYS, you're going to find all of your favorite books and you're going to support the podcast in the process. But that's not even the best part. Bookshop has an incredible program that allows you to select your favorite mom and pop or neighborhood bookstore and they will give them some of the proceeds from your order. Now, living here in Philly, that's been a really hard choice because we have fantastic bookstores all over. But I selected Harriet, which is a truly wonderful black owned bookstore in northern philly i love it my wife loves it we go there as much as we can honestly why would you go anywhere else so again go check out bookshop at bookshop.org shop cys you're gonna find the book you're looking for you're gonna support your neighborhood bookstore and you're gonna support the podcast in the process so check it out today and go ahead and buy that book you've been waiting for Subscribe to my Patreon for behind-the-scenes looks at the podcast, sneak peeks, and bonus data. You'll also get a discount on Choose Your Struggle merch. Find it at patreon.com slash choose your struggle. All right, we've come to the end of another episode of the Choose Your Struggle podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the great, great conversation with, with Gloria Singer. She... Uh, was fantastic. I hope you loved hearing at the beginning where I was just like, I don't know what to, I'm so, <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. Um, as I say uh, there, like, I don't, I, I don't know how to, to say to someone who's lost it. Like, I don't know what to say to someone who's lost a child. I, I don't, I, I have no idea. Uh, I've said this before. You know, somebody reached out to me uh, a couple of years ago, uh, 
or, or I got to ch- chatting with uh, the author of a beautiful boy, the, the book, um, really nice guy. And uh, I told him, I was like, dude, full disclosure. I've not seen, read your book. I've not seen the movie based on it. Um, you know, I, my take on this, my direction at this is very clinical and it's very um, from, from the viewpoint of a person who has struggled the the viewpoint of a parent a loved one is not one that i have conquered it's not one i've 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 even tried to tackle um it's a whole nother whole nother world a whole nother realm uh and it's not one that i spend a lot of time in um for both emotional uh strength and, and also you know that's not my that's not my right to win as i love to talk to say to Ryan, you know, something I pay attention to a lot is it's it's one thing to say I can do this. It's another thing to say, and I have a right to win at this. Uh, my right to win is is as the guy who lived through it, as a guy who has spent now years studying drug policy, uh, drug use and theory, the science around it. That's my right to win. I can't talk about what a parent went through. Um, and, and when it comes to substance misuse, mental health, and stuff like that. And so you hear me say to Laurie that, like, that's where that's coming from. Of like, I just, I don't even know how, I don't even know what I'm, what I can say other than I am so sorry that you had to go through that. So, uh, thank you so much, Laurie, really for a fantastic conversation. Today's card pack, we're using Blurt's, uh, Nuggets of Kindness cards. Um, you know, mostly because of, of the, the kindness uh, and the inspiration that Lori and, and her husband showed with the loss of their child to try to create something out of these, this unimaginable tragedy. Um, but also because we're coming to the end of the year or the season here and, and uh, this time of year specifically is about acts of kindness and, and being of service to other people. So here you go. Whatever it is that you need right at this moment in time, get it. Prioritize it. Make room for it. Tell other people about it. Your needs are important. Heed them. That's a great card. Uh, thank you, Blurt. Um, yeah, I, 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 you know, <laughs> I fully agree. Uh, this is something <laughs> I was just on the phone with uh, our good friend at Savage Sisters, Sarah Laurel. Uh, who you're going to hear from in a couple of weeks on uh, Rock Bottom three, 4, excuse me, Rock Bottom 4, which I will talk more about on the What's Coming Down the Road episode in a couple of weeks, but uh, that is scheduled, and Sarah is one of the storytellers. Um, and this is something we talk about a lot, is that people who are in service to others, who do work that is completely about helping others, our needs can at times be buried. And this is something that I tell Sarah all the time is that, you know, she is doing such an incredible job being there for other people that she needs to remember to be there for herself. And that is a great card for that reminder. And it leads right into my good egg for today, which is telling y'all what I need. <laughs> uh, again, I shouted out on the, on the intro. I am doing a giveaway. Um, you know, part of this is for y'all. I, I'm really excited uh, you know, this is a full giveaway. There's choose your struggle stuff. There's partner stuff with from from book uh, bookshop and and uh, Roadrunner, and then there's this amazing massager. I uh, I have great things for you, so please enter the giveaway. But also, it's for me. You know, this is to get more reviews. This is to get uh some of y'all to connect with me on social media if you haven't done it already. I shout it out every episode. Check me out on Instagram. That's the easiest, obviously. Um, you know, I, I will put all the names on all social media, but, but you know, Instagram is the easiest. It's where I do a lot. LinkedIn as well. Um, you know, Twitter, Facebook, sure. Tw- what's it called? TikTok, less so. I'm never on Twitch. Just, you know, hit me up on one of those. And, and especially if you leave a review, even if your name is in it, you know, leave say, hey, that was me. Um, because sometimes it's really hard to find people. So really would appreciate that. And, and you'll be entered to win something cool, but as always be vulnerable, show your empathy, spread love and choose your struggle.